Hi everyone, welcome back to Rachel's studio and in today's tutorial I'm going to show you some of the techniques that I use to create this Maine Coon cat painting and thank you so much to Arabella Carrington, one of my Patreon members who agreed to allow me to paint her beautiful cat. And by the way, I painted this not once but two times, once on cold press 11 by 14 inches and that's what you'll see in this tutorial today and I also painted it on hot press and I share both these tutorials on my Patreon from start to finish with full explanation. So once you join, you will get access to not just those, but about 90 other tutorials, depending on what level you join. So it makes it possible for me to embark in an art career without my relatives laughing at me. <laughs> but let's go ahead and get started with this watercolor tutorial of a Maine Coon cat on cold press paper. And here I have painted the whole background. And while it's still wet, with the background paint, I'm going in while it's still wet with burnt sienna. I'm using my silver black velvet size eight round, probably my most used brush that I have. And so this is what we call an underpainting when it's the first wash. And you can see how much I'm scrubbing my brush over there in the burnt sienna. I'm getting what we call cream consistency paint because my water color paper is still quite damp. And you can tell that because the paint is blooming out ever so slightly and softly. And that's what creates these dreamy soft marks when you're painting a really soft long haired cat, especially this is a great way to work. It's called wet and wet technique. And I'm trying to remember to use more than one color when I paint the fur, which is easy to forget. But here I'm adding some ultramarine blue to my burnt sienna to get a more chocolate color so that I'm painting that right over that pure burnt sienna to add some variety. This cat has stripes and a lot of different colors in the coat if you really look. So it's really great the more you can get done in this first wash. And so I'm trying to get as much done, move as quickly as I possibly can. I'm really adding a lot of ultramarine blue there to almost get a black now for these lower areas, especially where there's more shadows. And I use the side of my brush to get a feathery um, fur look and varying my strokes to make uh, the fur textures more realistic. And in general, when I'm painting fur, I make my strokes about as long as the fur is and in the direction of the fur. Now this cat's fur was so fluffy that it really didn't have a direction. It just kind of poofs out, which is really a great, a really great way to paint that kind of fur is on quite damp paper. And I've made other videos talking about different levels of moisture on your brush and in on your paper. You can paint on dry paper. You can paint on buckling paper. You can paint on glistening paper. So the more wet your paper, the softer your fur is going to look. But if you go too wet, it's going to bloom out uncontrollably and your cat is going to begin to look like a fluff ball instead of um, showing the contours of the cat. So you do have to practice this these techniques a lot. These are more advanced techniques. You've got to get the amount of water ratio in your brush and on your paper right. And I've made several videos in my watercolor basic series and also in my fur series. There's some really good videos explaining all that more in depth. Um, so go check out those playlists and I will link those here. And here I'm using straight Daniel Smith lamp black. And as you know, if you follow me a lot, you know I love Daniel Smith Lamp Black because when you paint wet and wet with it and just leave it alone, if you paint cream consistency on buckling paper with Daniel Smith Lamp Black, it will bloom out in a furry effect. Be sure to go check out my chick video to see what I mean, but it's so great for painting fur details. So here I'm, I'm maintaining control, one, because my paper is... Um, getting drier, but it's still damp, so it's still soft. And I'm getting those smaller stripes on the face because I'm using really thick cream consistency lamp black with just a little bit of water added. So you got to get just the right amount of water to paint ratio and just the right amount of dampness on your paper to get some of these really soft, dreamy, fur-like effects. So it does take practice. Even I still repaint things 
one, two, three, even four times. So just know that's just part of the artistic process, especially when you're learning some of these harder techniques. And here what you see me doing is painting burnt sienna, maybe with a little ultramarine blue added. And by the way, you can paint all the fur colors in this particular painting with just two colors, ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. You don't need any other colors. So that's nice because it doesn't have to be complicated. But I'm painting these colors on dry paper with more milk consistency paint. And you can tell that because the paint is lighter. Where the paint looks darker, I painted with thicker paint. Thicker meaning creamier, meaning less water added. And I'm using my one inch square brush, uh, one inch flat brush, I'm sorry. And uh, I've been hearing a lot of good things about using this kind of brush. So I've been trying to break some habits and get away from my round brush once in a while. But I always go back to that silver black velvet size eight round. But again, this is a one inch flat. And you can get a lot of nice textures with it by using it on the side or using it flat. And you see me once in a while blotting out my brush on the paper towel because I do that so that when I touch my paintbrush to the paper, and it's especially if it, the paper's in buckling stage, I don't get cauliflowers. Now, sometimes I do want cauliflowers. And on the hot press painting, I show my students how I get beautiful cauliflowers. And in fact, I got a beautiful cauliflower on this cat. If you look, his chest has a cauliflower of white fur going into the background. And uh, that's my push technique, and I'll link that here. But as the paper dries, I'm kind of opportunistic and paint. I paint on the paper where it's the perfect conditions for the look I want to achieve, which often, especially for those like th those black stripes on the face, and now that they, they're drying, you can see how they bloomed out just perfectly. And I got that because I let the painting dry, and when I saw that it was the right consistency, that's when I went in and painted those stripes on the side of the face. So I had to wait for the exact right moment of paper dryness to paint those stripes. And it's kind of a damp, um, a damp phase, whereas I call it buckling. And it's buckling because the water has soaked into the paper and it makes the paper buckle and you can get a lot of beautiful effects at that stage. Here, I'm painting on almost dry paper but it's still a little damp. I'm using very thick Daniel Smith Lamp Black, and I'm using one of my very favorite brushes, my Princeton Aqua Elite, size four long. And by the way, I will link to all these supplies in the description. So those are affiliate links, so I do get a little commission. It's not more expensive for you though. And I do appreciate you using my affiliate links, but uh, this is my beloved Aqua Elite size four long for smaller details, but I am painting with very thick cream consistency, Daniel Smith Lamp Black here, and getting some beautiful stripes that bloom out just a little because the paper is just a little damp, but I'm using cream consistency paint. So if I tilted up my palette right now, that paint would not run. If it was milk consistency, it would form a bead, but not drip. If it was tea consistency, the paint would dip down the palette if I tilted my palette up. And so I'm being opportunistic again because this leg has dried to the point where it's still a little damp. It's buckling and I can go in with cream consistency and get these beautiful soft stripes that still hold their shape. Another thing I want you to notice about painting stripes is each one is different. This one's thick. That one's thin. This one has a V shape, kind of roughly. Uh, the other one has a thick area, then it's thin. It's almost calligraphic in some of these stripes. So try to really look at your reference and you'll notice no stripe is the same. Be sure not to get stripe gate, where you have a gate of stripes that are all equal, equidistant from each other, all the same size, all the same thickness, all the same color. Very rarely are you going to find a cat that looks like that. So don't paint your stripes in a stripe gate fashion. <laughs> and now I'm using just some pretty straight up blue, but uh, this is French ultramarine, but I've added a little bit of junk on my palette to gray it down to make it look more natural. And I'm just 
putting in the contours of the cat with some um, ultramarine blue and I believe I painted that on dry and then I go in with a clean clear water brush that's been wrung out a little bit and I just brush along the sides of the mark I made to soften it so you can do that and I'm making these marks uh, down the chest to add a little bit of shading here and there I'm painting this on perfectly dry paper now and you can tell that because the paints not moving um, the fur isn't moving so once your watercolor is completely dry you can put a glaze over it like this to create shadows and it also helps direct the viewer's eye because where there's shadows and less detail the viewer's eye will keep moving and where there's more sharp details and brighter colors your viewer's eye will stop and look that's why I put so much detail in the eyes and yes the eyes I just noticed are so cattywampus but I do fix them and I fix and I fix and I fix when I'm working on eyes and cats in general anything in general that's just part of watercolor painting is putting something down seeing how it looks and possibly fixing it so that's another thing you'll learn with me on patreon is how to fix your painting as you go and that's just part of the process it's even if you're a professional painter that's been painting for years and years and years you're gonna have to fix your painting but anyway, I'm using some of the blue that's in the background. I'm incorporating it into the cat's fur, into the shadows to tie the colors in the background together with the cat. And I'm also using some Windsor Violet. There goes some Windsor Violet. And that's not an important area. So you see how I'm just kind of smearing it all over uh, that whole area in shadow because none of it's important so it's okay for it all to kind of bleed and merge together but I am painting carefully around um, that little white foot sticking out notice and part of the foot that's uh, his front the cat's front left foot that's coming back I left that more pure warm colors and put the purple next to it to kind of pop it out all right, I've got that size four long that I love, and now I'm using really watery paint, almost tea consistency, but see how puddly it is? That means that I've added a lot of water to my watercolor paint. And even though it looks dark going on when it dries, it'll be a really delicate glaze. And I'm using really calligraphic brush strokes with just very watery paint on top of what I've already painted. And this is one of my favorite things parts of this particular painting is how that worked so well. I loved the look of these very calligraphic marks after they dried because they were very delicate because they were so watery. So they were really light and not bam in your face, super dark. Although they, I, like I said, I know they look dark now and that's how watercolor is. It dries a lot lighter than when you put it on but see how much water I have and I'm really using that brush in a calligraphic way to get thin areas and thick areas and squiggles here and every single one is very different to add some stripe textures on top of what I've already painted so I have to paint this on perfectly dry paper and I'm painting tea consistency over some of these um, other areas to add a little bit of detail. The cat had the cutest little curly hairs here on his tummy and it was showing through. So I know the owner really liked that. And so I wanted to capture that cute little part of the personality of the fur of this cat's belly there. And now I, uh, it's dried. So now can you see those calligraphic marks? They're quite subtle, but you can still definitely see them and they just add some interest and some texture. Now be sure to watch my Patreon again to get details on the eyes, how I used color to pop the green eyes out. Uh, I used a lot of color theory to make sure that those green eyes really popped out and I did a lot of fixing on those eyes. They looked super wonky and then I had to do a lot of fixing and I let my members on Patreon see that whole process of fixing the eyes, painting them fixing again because they're still messed up it was quite a process but they just came out so beautifully I was very happy with them thank you so much for joining me for this tutorial of the Maine Coon watercolor cat 
and I hope you will come join me over on Patreon. Come check out my Facebook group. I will put links below to links to all my favorite supplies, some free tutorials that you can try out to see if you like my teaching style and a bunch of other goodies. So be sure to go check out the description and until next time, go watercolor your world. Bye everybody.